What's going on, guys? So this is part three. So for now, um, I'm not quite done, but I'm at a stopping point. And um, so let's see here. Since part two, uh, so what I did was came in and stole power right out of here and ran a piece of armor like cable. Put a 20 amp up there, another 20 amp down here and another 20 here it, that way that one there can charge can charge my batteries and this one over here if i decide to put one of the uh, lapidary saws up here i have a plug for it and if i decide to put the other one over here i have a plug for it but also um if you want it you can put different lapidary equipment up there like a cabbing machine would be perfect up there a cabbing machine and a trim saw now i don't really do much with cabbing anymore um, you know, that's, that's why there's no machine up there. Um, uh, but toolbox is all mounted in. I made these little shelves. So as a little challenge to myself, I wanted to see, uh, how much of the sheet of plywood that I could use, you know, without, uh, and how, how little waste I can have. So I made that shelf down there out of the sheet, that one there. And then I made these little cute little corner. ones that you see here they match the contour of the, of the wall and come out a little bit and rounded the corners over so those are done that's actually a light bar off my other machine and what else did we do oh so you guys seen this here uh this was from part one and then here is a matching table just like that it has the foot bolts in it as you see so these legs fold right up, right up underneath, and this whole table folds flat down right against the wall. And same deal with this. And then for the shelves, that's one thing that I'm, that I'm waiting on, is next time I go by a hardware store that sells lumber, um, I'll get another probably a half sheet of uh, plywood. And I got these little brackets here. So you do is you push this. I'm doing this one-handed and push this one and there you go Boom. that's exactly the same way how these these guys fold down except for instead of using store-bought ones you know uh, foldable hinges we used regular hinges and then reinforced everything so it's strong um, but for me this table I mean you can put a cabbing machine all kinds of, of lapidary equipment over here if you wanted to um, for me though uh, I'll do live sales on this and this is for shipping and packing there are shipping supplies down there in boxes and you know and, and whatnot and then there's like a little shelf for tape guns And the best part, this here was actually, this was tricky. There's a lot of wires in there. We had to pigtail different things. Um, so what we did was, the other night, put in that guy right there and ran that piece of Romex, well, it's not really Romex, Armor Light, over to a switch. And so I have the power coming into this box and then if you see in between, we have the power jumping over to this box outside. And if you see outside, I'll show you guys. I'm going to mount more of these. It's two for start. Uh, there's little LED lights. Well, they're not little. Um, they're IP66 rated, so they're, they're waterproof. I'm trying to figure out why they, even when I just plugged them in, um, when I first got them, they have this... Uh, like a small residual amount of power going to them. And that doesn't seem right because the power should be shut off because that switch. So it's something I have to look at, but the other one's exactly the same way. So it doesn't quite make, make sense. <coughs> but what we have for working outside, oh, and we put this screen in and I'm gonna put one in the back there because like I said in a previous video is how bad the flies are. And it just has little magnetic closure it's actually like a nice real heavy duty material and there's magnets all the way down so you can go through it nice and easy and it closes right behind you open on a little bit on the bottom and then there's another light outside 
So I was gonna put these all on one switch, but this guy here is for this side and this one is for the back. So to give you guys an idea, that's with no lights on. The light that you see in the video is actually residual light coming out the door. And here's with the new work light. Oh yeah, look at that whole area lit up. So when I come back late, you know, from the claims or whatever, if I'm outside at night, I have to stop when it gets dark out working and it gets dark, you know, I hear like six o'clock uh, being winter time. And, you know, I'm the type of person to go, to, you know, 12, 14 hours. So at least now I can work outside. I'm gonna put another one of those. I'm gonna put one mid side down on the trailer, I think. I really don't need to, but I'm thinking about it because there is a little bit of a dull spot. You can still see plenty. Over here, I mean, the light goes all the way out. And that light is adjustable. I can tilt that light any way I want. If I want to put, you know, push more light out further out, um, or if I want it more localized here, I can, t I can turn it down. It's on a swivel. And I uh, have a little bit of Loctite, or not Loctite, but thread, thread locker on them with a uh, lock washer. So I can move them, but they're not going to come loose when I go down the highway. And then same deal out back. This one here, I point it down pretty far as you can see. And it's not, this one's not on yet. That's the residual light coming out of the trailer. You know, which really isn't much. I'll show you guys with no light. If I close this door. So there's with that door closed. So there's no light bleeding out. There's a little bit of light up there. But you guys can see, I mean, it lights a nice big area. And then if we come around the back, and we turn number two on, and as you can see, I can take these and adjust these any way I want if I want to move the light in. I could move it straight down if I want. Yeah, you know, say I'm loading stuff up and the trailer's packed and it's really dark. I can actually tilt that light in and actually light up the inside of the trailer if I didn't want to turn these on. So there you go. And then with that door closed, And once again, I mean, it's a huge area. Nothing, you can see it's tilted down pretty, whoop, let me get to the side here. As you can see, it's pointed pretty much down at the ground. If I would point it out, I mean, I can literally light up the whole side of his motorhome and, tra and trailer the, if we'd move that down. But the point is that we just have light outside, you know, to work at nighttime. And I mean, this is such an improvement. Another one of these might actually be almost too much um, now, originally, what I was thinking of doing, and this is another option for you guys that want to do the same. By the way, I got these on Amazon, these lights. Is a light bar. So that's the old light bar off my, uh, my little UTV. <laughs> and um, what you can do, being that this is a 120-volt system, this is a 12-volt light. So you can't just wire this light into that. Um, but if you go on, go on Amazon, type in AC to DC converter, you get a little box. It's like a little rectangular metal box, and you'll see a bunch of screws on the end of it. Uh, that's what you're looking for. What you do is simply bring in your hot and your common into it, and then put in your 120 AC on the other side, and it takes it and jumps it from 120 down to 12 volt, or, or to DC, rather. And uh, so you can do that. So what I could do if I wanted to, being I thought of putting a light on the uh, on this side, and actually two like cube lights up top for when I'm I'm getting a trailer set up or I'm trying to hook up to it, you know, or or whatever I'm trying to do stuff on that that side of it. So I might put one cube light over there, one cube light there that are 12 volt, and then a big 52 inch light bar over here. And maybe leave these spotlights, maybe put a third one over there. I mean, that's kind of getting crazy. But th this is down the line, guys, of course, in the future. You know, down the road. Look at that. Only like, what, two days? 
Yep, little buggers. We uh, we got one of those uh, bug assault, them little salt uh, shotgun fly killer thingamajiggers. And uh, we've been killing them with that, and it actually works really good. It's way easier than trying to hit them with a fly swatter. You know, half the time they make it away like that little guy up there, he's sleeping. Hey, wake up. Come on, you're evicted. Out. Vamanos, machachos. So there you have it, guys. She's pretty much complete. For now, anyways. I got little hooks to hang up pretty much everything. Got a little hook to hang the bike pump up. One for the ladder. Got one for the cables. I have all the, the ratchet straps, bungee cords, all stretched between two pieces of E-Track with the little hook-on connectors. So when I need this kind of stuff to strap the machine down, boom, I grab the rings that need to go on the floor. I grab the, the ratchet straps that need to go on the floor. And, I mean, it's a very, very simple loadout comparatively to, you know, what I was doing before. Pretty much everything in this trailer, when it's folded down, will fold down to about the width of that. In other words, when that table drops down, it, it only comes out about so far in a couple inches. So it's going to be really easy. You can even put a four-seater, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, you could put a four-seater um, UTV in here if you wanted to, um, or two-seater or anything like that. So I bought that with in mind because I do plan on getting either a two- or a four-seater because trying to, to run multiple multiple bikes like this, if we had, you know, just something that we could take multiple people in instead of all these separate bikes dirt bikes and everything else it would just be so much easier um you know every time you add another engine that's another engine for maintenance it's tires i need to get tires on that we just did a wheel alignment on that today now finally uh, uh tomorrow roy's gonna do the uh the carb on that or we'll do the carb i guess and but that's more of his uh his wheelhouse he's gonna do the fine tuning on it and stuff so yeah there you have it guys well i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions comments um you know just let me know down below and i thank you guys if you guys can like and subscribe i'd sure appreciate it and we'll see you guys in the next one check out my facebook page for weekly live sales that we do we're going to be starting them up very shortly um we haven't been doing them because you know obviously we're focusing on, on mining but <laughs> now that these big projects are out of the way um it's pretty much going to be just going to the claims and uh, we'll be doing private sales for anybody who's into any of the Rainbow Turquoise, um, Rainbow Buffalo, the Arizona White Buffalo, any of that kind of stuff, let me know. All right, you guys. So going to dig more of this. Actually, yesterday, that is the Rainbow. That's more blue spider web in there, but it's definitely a killer piece of Rainbow. And you can see from the outside, very, very tough to spot. All right, guys. Hey, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, doggy. <laughs> awesome. All right, you guys. Hey, thanks for watching. See you on the next one, guys.